Go ahead, I, Billy. Just, Billy, I can, go ahead, I can agree that the longer you're with somebody, the better sex gets. So why is she not enough? Why is she not enough? It's why I mean like enough, it's kind of like yeah, asking Steven. it's kind of like if you've got like a close friend but then you've got other friends like well why is that one friend not enough? Yeah. Because in life sometimes variety is fun. Sometimes I want to be with a girl that's Hispanic or Asian. Sometimes I want to be with somebody that is marriage into something is like not slightly a friendship. different. Uh, I didn't say marriage was a friendship, a friendship, but marriage to me isn't just about my going in her vagina. There's a lot of aspects to my marriage that I share with my wife that's really unique to my wife that I don't share with other people. My yeah. It's just not one of those things. Is it right? going? I mean, that's is why it, some people say that emotional cheating is also a thing in, in marriage. Sure, that's great. But Do I'm just saying that, like, there, there are, I think that there are a level some of things. closeness is only appropriate between spouses. In your opinion, which is fine. Um, but there are some things that are fun to explore sexually with other people that not everybody might like. There might be some people that are into certain things that, like, I'm not into that she gets another guy. There might be some girls that are into certain things that they're into that she's not into. Like, so being able to explore sexually with other people is just a fun thing. If, if you're both okay with it, then yeah. Okay, so this, this value of fun, it's a very interesting one that's been brought up, right? Mm -hmm. it's, kind, it's kind of like a, a chief value here in the discussion. Sure. And the question it begs in my mind is, God forbid this happens, will it be fun if this open relationship ends up causing things to fall apart down the line if one of you guys finds yourself in a uh, an entanglement so to speak with no, some, that, with yeah. hold on, with somebody who you might find a deeper connection with than the other person like if that causes the relationship to, to fall apart that probably wouldn't be very fun no it would be horrible and yeah. it would be sad but monogamous relationships have the same issue, the same issue right? Yes. How many times do you have like a man that falls in love with a coworker or a woman that falls in love with a friend that she spends too much time with? Like monogamous people have to put up a lot of boundaries in their relationships they too do. because they, they worry about the same types of things, you know? And so they, I mean, and like, this, I, is, I think, this is part of the reason yeah. why, like, like that is. So I, I, I was conceived by a man who had an extra. I would hope so. Oh, oh sorry. extramarital okay. affair. <laughs> okay, he had an extramarital affair with my mother, mm -hmm. and he was extremely in love with her, mm -hmm. and he felt a deeper connection, from what I understand, with my mother than he did with his wife. Right, mm -hmm. and this is why, like, we're trad Christians preaching the Christian gospel and the Christian way of life, because it's like, yes, people will, like, in marriage, people will likely find somebody else at some point in time during the marriage that they feel a stronger connection with, mm -hmm. but through embodying virtue, like, you can you can shut down. Uh, that impulse you can resist that temptation and stuff and it's like I, I don't know I personally think that that's a better approach than entertaining it because what if someday one of you guys runs into somebody that you have a better emotional connection with like what would you do then uh, again I understand the question but like monogamous people have this exact same problem they do but what but you, you can rely, guard against what you it rely on with yeah virtue. but the guardian in my opinion is the history that you've built together right I, there's or probably the virtue that you choose to embody if that's how I you want to do it history. yeah but there's like yeah. there's, there's probably a lot of people there's with probably history that still cheat though there's probably some woman out there that would be like a better match for me than melina there's probably Watch some it. guy yeah. <laughs> there's, probably, there's probably some guy out there that would be a better match for her than me but we've got like four and a half years up to now of history built together that we know and like our lifestyle works really well we match yeah. very we want the same things like yeah so part now. i think part of what makes a relationship work is that relationships require a lot of deliberate work they don't just happen and they don't just grow naturally. It's not for a little bit for the beginning, like, they do. but they require yeah. like a lot of deliberate, like we're going to work on things, we're going to build on things, we're going to have this. And that thing that you build is part of what makes you romantically attracted to each other. Not in the honeymoon way, but in like a, this is a relationship that works kind of way. And that thing you can't find with other people. There might be a girl that I meet and I connect with in a ton of awesome in, ways, but it's like, I don't know. Way. But yeah. lot, here, here's the mm -hmm. thing about that. I mean, you, you make a great point, but a lot of people, of course I do. A, lot, a lot of people build that, that, that foundation with one another over years and years but like one mm -hmm. of the thing one of the things that happens with a lot of women you know women are, are in many ways dominated by their emotions right no, men are men absolutely are the dominated same this, way. But <laughs> we, we are but like it's like equal. Uh, one of the thing one of the things that you hear very often happens in marriages is like you know there will be a bit of tension maybe the guy gets fired from his job he's having a, a tough time finding a new one he loses some of his confidence you know she's like kind of got the ick from her husband for a bit and then like some chad comes into the picture and he's like hey and he talks to her right and then boom she cheats Happens all the time. I've no, seen, hold on. I've heard it a million times. Men cheat but, more but than it, women. Okay, yes. You can apply it. You can apply it to both sexes, though. Sure. What I'm talking about, you can apply it to both sexes, and at that point in time, your history, your foundation, doesn't matter. It all goes out the window the second that emotion. Sure, gets but that would be the, the case mix. whether or not we were open or closed. Yeah. Right. If I lose all my confidence and I turn into a loser and I just was smoking weed all day and play League of Legends it's not like I'm going to rely on my monogamy to keep her trapped also, in the house. Also I feel like, like it kind of helps like having an open relationship too because you actually get to like taste the things that you're interested in that might not be like a relationship you know like you live with them or you want to have a future with them right? But is that sustainable? Do, yeah do yeah. you guys, yeah. 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 guys Don't we have the longest relationship at this table so far? <laughs> you yeah. do you do but, sure. but like do you guys have a high degree of confidence that your marriage will last for decades? I mean yeah. I married her without a prenup so I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> okay or else this motherfucker is going to be 
I'm cu I'm curious. I'm curious what, what the chat thinks. No. I'm I'm curious what the chat thinks. Do you guys have a high degree of confidence that their marriage will go the distance? Let us. Know. I mean, you shouldn't have a high degree of confidence in anybody because even monogamous marriages have like a fifty percent fucking fail rate, right? Yeah, but like if well. if you if you take you know again to go back to the Christianity thing, if you really take your vows before God seriously and you're regularly attending church and like that's a really important thing to you, you know, you look at the data on that. The, uh -huh. the divorce rates are much lower than the average. I of the understand population. what you're saying, and I it's hard to fight this because like it's hard without making it sound like an attack on your relationship. Okay. But you're asking me hard questions. So like, this is yeah. how I view it personally, mm -hmm. okay? I want my wife to be with me, not because I'm the only one she's allowed to f and not because we made a promise in front of a sky fairy a long time ago that she has to be with me. I want her to be with me because she loves me, because she respects me, because she thinks I'm the coolest guy for her, and because all the things that I'm doing are things that are inspiring to her in her life. And for the way that our relationship works, I know that at every point we're with each other, it's because we match and exceed those expectations from each other, right? She's not with, she will never think that like, oh, um, the only reason Steven hasn't like left me for another woman is because, you know, he could go fuck somebody else, right? Because we can, we can do that, but we're still with each other at the end of the day, right? That's like our marriage, that's how we view our relationship. If for some people, vows and everything work, like that's cool. But I feel like with the type of lifestyle I lead, with the ways that I excel in my career, and with the ways that she's like growing and excelling in her career, I would hope that the reasons why we're together are more than just because of vows. Transactional things. Some number yeah. of years ago. Yeah, that's my point of view. And I understand that's not for everybody, and some people do things differently. But then, like, I also see, and I know personal examples, I won't call them out, but um, where people have taken those vows and they're stuck in some miserable ass fucking relationships. Yeah, it happens and all it the is, time. Yeah, and they're like, well, I took this vow. I don't want to fucking do it. If I'm Catholic, I have to get an annulment. Uh, it's going to look bad in front of my whole family. And then you see these really sad people in their 30s, okay, that are like the rest and of my life like, is going to be relegated to this miserable fuck relationship, and I can't get out because I promised somebody that I wouldn't. And it's like, fuck, that's so sad. You know? That's like so much worse than like anything else. I get yeah. really sad whenever I see that. I, I think the problem there is that along. they took the vow in the first place. I think they didn't recognize how serious it was where, you know, they jumped into this relationship or some with sometimes somebody. Sometimes you don't know someone until you live with them for a little bit and then you realize yeah. that this is not for me, but then they, they've like hardcore uh -huh. committed. Like I'm a, I was a virgin before this. No one's going to ever want me again. I'm religious. My parents are going to hate me. Like, and then they just, they're stuck in this relationship that might be really abusive. I think, and, and then they're having kids and they don't dare to divorce. And this is where like... Uh, yeah. for it's like a hyper niche example though. That's this not a hyper niche. A that's lot. probably one of this the norms. That's probably lot. one of the norms. Mm, I don't know. This happens Absolutely. A lot. You have any sources, anything to back that up? Look at the, look at the divorce rate. Just based on the fact that like virgins, like people are not saving sex for marriage in general these days like that does not happen a lot yeah if you, if you no, look at this hold on hold if you look at the statistics hold on hold on if you i'm sorry this point needs to be made if you look at the statistics on virgins who get married they have a less than two percent divorce rate yes yeah. but what if that those marriages are uh, abusive this is like a hypothetical it. situation no, but, but the it's thing like what what are the stats on how many of those marriages why they're not divorcing is because of the pressure that they have from their families and uh, from the that's that's an assumption. that they come from. That, that's that is an assumption, assumption but there's, there's some percentage. I didn't bring yeah. that that's up. Good, so that's good, That's like good that that pressure's on their No, that's, yeah. not that's good. Why? That's good. If it's yeah. abusive, no, because it's shame, shame, it's not. shame is it's a good like thing. And I think of course it could might be. Abuse has always sure. been considered grounds for divorce but, even. Yeah. 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 One of the it's things not, with no, no, the, physical uh, abuses, physical abuses. One of the things but with like, monogamous. Dudes are not like lining up en well, masse right? to like beat their wives' asses. Like that's, that's not, not, that's that's not, like, not like, 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 no, no, no. Cause the general be thing in America, the general thing in America is like, like these feminists think like guys are like, all right, listen here, wife, you better fucking make some great tuna casserole. I'm going to beat your fucking ass. And it's just like, does it work? No, 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 no. Nobody, it doesn't work like that at all. That's like what abuse looks like, right? Like that's like the most like straw man stereotype form of abuse. Okay. Do you guys know what abuse looks like? Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me, we don't even have to go as far as abusive. Okay. That's cool. Listening to Fresh's girlfriend. Hey guys, hey guys, guys, let's, let's get through the super chats. Let's try to get through all of them. And then if we want to continue any conversation.